Four years after Rachel Cook vanished, career criminal Michael Keith Moore was about to plead guilty to her murder. So that's huge news. It's huge. It's huge news. We got a name. We got a suspect. Couldn't believe it. I remember the first time I saw his face. He just, just pure evil. Did you believe him, though? I don't know if I believed him or not, but I, what he did was disgusting by dragging us through that. He wrote a very detailed story about what he did. Just, it, you know, just, it just hearing those things is just too much. Moore voluntarily confessed, telling police he kidnapped Rachel, bludgeoned her with a hammer, and dumped her body into the Gulf of Mexico. When he confesses to the murder and gives some detail of the, of the murder, uh, detectives have no choice but to believe what he's saying because who in their right mind would confess to a murder that they didn't do? And some of what he said made sense. And then came that long anticipated day inside this jammed Central Texas courtroom. Everyone assembles in the courtroom. Michael Moore has confessed to killing Rachel and he is gonna enter into a plea agreement all the cameras are there. You could see the family excited in, in, a, in closure. A closure, right? Mm -hmm. But there would be nothing that resembles closure or justice, nothing even close. What Michael Moore had planned was a sadistic hoax. Call, calls number 06 1823 K 368 State versus Michael P. Moore. If the charge of murder is alleged, how do you plead? Moore's stunning reversal rocked the courtroom. The convicted killer, con man, and all-around bad guy delivered an emotionally lethal blow to the family of Rachel Cook. What did he do to the family by putting everybody through this? Why would you do that to us? I mean, it's just sick. It's psychotic. We think that, you know, something's going to happen, and then it's just kind of ripped away from us. So. Um, so I think a lot of people in my family, it was just kind of like disbelief and anger. The fact that he admitted to it and then denied it shows you what type of personality and what kind of monster he really is. But then why say I did it in the first place? And d didn't he offer authorities very specific details that made it plausible that he could have been the killer? Yeah, I don't know how specific or how much information was put out in the media back then. I know that you ask one reason why he did it. He got a ride to the coast. He got to eat some cheeseburgers because he was sitting in a cell in Texas prison prior to that. So he got something out of the lie, if that's the case. Uh, you're looking at me like... Yeah, like he did it just to get out of jail for a little bit to... It wouldn't be the first time. The district attorney could not pursue the case against Moore. There was just no evidence to prove he killed Rachel. And the cross, I don't know who brought it. For Janet and Joanne Cook, there's no expiration date on the crushing pain they still feel. Sister Joanne isn't sure she even wants to hear the truth anymore. You feel that any news you got now would be bad news. Mm -hmm. Is it almost like you don't want to hear anything? Sometimes, and I think that's one thing that makes me very different than my mom is because I think she feels like finding something out will bring closure and relief, whereas me, I feel like it'll just be, it'll, it'll be those things that I don't wanna see, that I don't wanna do are true. There's another tragic turn in all of this. Rachel's father, Robert, passed away after a long illness and most certainly of a broken heart. What do you mean today? Robert Cook went to his grave never knowing what happened to his daughter. How do you think this permanently affected your father? I know he, he felt like he had failed her, that he wasn't there, he didn't protect her. Um, but I don't think that at all. I think he's done so much to try to help her out and try to figure out what happened. And despite the frustration, the setbacks, and the missteps of previous administrations, Sheriff Robert Chody vows to forge ahead. And we actually have four investigators on her case. That, that's all they do is they, they're working the Rachel Cook case. And Michael Keith Moore is also very well placed on Chody's list. Do you think Michael Moore did it? I, I think he's a strong suspect, yes. Still? Still. 
With 100 persons of interest, but not a single eyewitness or a speck of physical evidence, it's going to take more than aggressive police work. Chody wants the public to share the workload. So I really do believe this is a solvable case. We just got to get that information. Would you say that it's reasonable to assume that if someone out there knows something, if they haven't said it yet or turned it over yet, what makes anybody think that they're going to do it now? I think because somewhere, someone down the line is going to mess up. I think they've kept the secret for so long that eventually they're going to mess up and they're going to tell somebody, they're going to tell an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend and that person's going to come forward and it's going to say something. And finally, the truth will come out. The FBI and Rachel's family have teamed up to offer a reward of up to $100,000 for information that leads to the discovery of Rachel Cook. If you know anything, you can submit a tip anonymously at CrimeWatchDaily.com or call the FBI at 1-800-225-5324. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.